day. Such. Hello. Hello. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank, Thank you for tuning in to our session today of the Let's Talk Show. The Let's Talk Show is a show that covers the things that are affecting students across all universities, like pregnancy, drug abuse, lecture student relationship, or things that are affecting students basically like honey pregnancy. Our show today is the theme is a mom too soon. I'm, I'm Faith Mutua, your host today. As you all know, Amanda is an epicenter of women empowerment. Today we will be interacting with a few women who will be taking us through their journey of pregnancy. Let me just allow the women to introduce themselves and let me introduce Agnes. Tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Agnes Manuke, a third year student. So, hi guys, my name is Harris Wadimu. Uh, I'm a fourth year student pursuing a bachelor's degree in computer science and I'm a mother to uh, an almost four year old girl. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fid Zawadi. I'm a computer science student in the year, second semester. I'm also a Google developer and I'm a mother of a three-year-old. Thank you. Hello, my name is Victoria Kantunge, a 4.2 student pursuing Bachelor of Technology and Civil Engineering, and I'm a mama of a daughter of one year, seven months old. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Those are our beautiful ladies that we'll be interacting with today. So, let's talk about your experience of being pregnant. Okay. My experience of being pregnant. Indeed, it was not a good journey. It's so hard to be to become pregnant with us to date. Experiencing most challenges like you feel embarrassed sometimes. Sometimes you feel like you are isolated. Indeed, it was not a good experience. Yes. So being pregnant, I feel like that's, that's the biggest responsibility of God in our life. Because growing up, we think our parents are either doing things or maybe they don't know what they are saying. But then when you find yourself being a parent and or being an expected parent, it becomes a problem. So my experience being pregnant, there were times that I was high, there were times that I was low, but the low. Because I'm a student, I have other things that I'm doing. The low part is usually the, the one that is existing more. Yeah, so it's not an easy journey. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I would like to say that uh, my experience of being pregnant when I'm a student, uh, it's, it's quite challenging uh, for the fact that you have to take care of yourself and to take care of another human being that is entirely depending on you. Uh, it's challenging, but I, would, I wouldn't say it's a bad experience per se, because uh, I don't have regrets. I wouldn't regret that I got that baby, but the challenges will always be there. So that would be my experience. So as for me, I think my experience was different. I was quite lazy. <laughs> and most of the time I just spend my time in those machine that only Milala the whole day eating. Like I didn't have anything specific. Yeah. So yeah, we understand the experience is quite challenging as a mother. So did you know you were pregnant? I didn't know I was pregnant until it was four months. Okay. Yeah. So everything was just normal. I didn't get my menses, but I just thought that ah, is any hormones changes? Mm -hmm. So uh, I did know I was pregnant as at at two weeks old. That's when I realized that I was carrying a baby. Um, because I am those people that usually get their regular periods. So when I, I didn't get mine, I, I, like I, was, I, I knew that something was off. So I, I got tested and I found out that I'm pregnant. So 
did I know that I was pregnant? Uh, yeah. I feel like it's true what they say, the first test of being pregnant is thinking that you're pregnant. So, uh, before, even I would, uh, before the expected ministry date, I felt like something was wrong. So I took a test and uh, turned out positive. Yeah. Yes, I knew I was pregnant at around maybe two weeks. When you just feel like, you're not yourself. Then you just took a move and just did a test for the family. So, so after, after you realized you were pregnant, pregnant at that moment, did you, did you have any regrets? Did you, did, you did you feel embarrassed? Or did you even consider abortion? Okay, when I when I first noticed that I was pregnant, indeed I did not regret. I was just tense and little bit. But in my inner self, I felt like I'm feeling so beautiful. So I felt a little bit embarrassed, but at a, at a point I felt that it's like normal, so life manageable. Then did I consider abortion? Not at all, I don't consider abortion. I felt like let me have the experience of carrying a living being. So who was the first person you told that you were pregnant? The first person I told that I was pregnant was my friend. Yes. I just thought it's so nice that I tell my parents first. So I just told my friend first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So being pregnant, did I like did I get any regrets? Yeah. Yeah, because I felt like the situation surrounding the pregnancy wasn't something I was proud of. Also, embarrassment. No, I didn't feel embarrassed because I knew that carrying a baby isn't a big deal. Very in, uh, in mind that I'm above 18. I can make decisions. Not decisions, but then this is a responsibility. It has come. I'm afraid of dying because I didn't want to do an abortion. I thought people would just die. So I was afraid of dying and I decided, okay, well, I'll try this. But then I was numb. I would have allowed myself to feel emotions, but I decided to get numb. I avoided the emotions. And uh, because of avoiding the emotions, I think I've ended up in worse situations. Uh, I would say, allow yourself to feel it. Allow yourself to hurt. Allow yourself to to like experience it because you're in it. Don't avoid it. So I've never thought of having an abortion. I was afraid. Yeah. Did you tell yourself that you're pregnant? No. <laughs> okay, I'm um, um, I'm an extra introvert. Mm -hmm. I feel like most of the people don't don't know me, but they know me. Mm -hmm. So I did feel the need of telling people that I feel don't know me that I'm pregnant. So I chose to tell my mom first. How, How was that reaction? <laughs> okay. I wouldn't say because it's true for me, but then I know she didn't, she was at a point not happy about it, but she wouldn't show it. She told me it's okay, we are going to support you in this journey, but I would feel she's not okay with it. Yeah. Okay. yeah so for me, uh, for regret, I had none, I do not regret it. But I was scared. I, I, I didn't know how to go about it. I wasn't embarrassed because I had seen people that were pregnant. But the fact that it was now my turn, I was scared. I was like, I didn't know how to do it. So I just decided that I'll keep it. Um, I, I decided whatever comes, comes. And the first person I told about my pregnancy was the baby daddy and he took it quite positively and I had promised myself not to tell my mother until it was like three months but then something told me I better tell her and then we see what happened. Okay first thing she told me uh, it was don't 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 abort it that I should just keep it 
So you never considered abortion yourself? No, I didn't, I didn't even have that thought in mind at that time. So, so you have any regrets? I didn't have any regrets. Because I was like, this is a blessing. It's something I've been wanting for some time. I just wanted some of this moment in my life. So like, I didn't even consider abortion. The first person I told was my sister. She was the first person and then the baby daddy. So how did he take it? The baby daddy. He was tensed. He wasn't ready. But he just chose to keep it. So both of you never considered abortion. No. So how did the pregnancy change your your attitude towards life? Or, or did it bring any really changes in your life at the, at the moment? moment? At the moment it brought none because it took me a lot of time to realize that I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there were no changes, it was just the same. But the only change was that sleeping and eating a lot. So, so you never had, had any attitude? No, I had no attitude. Okay, for me, uh, there was quite a change in my life because I remember I was like finalizing my first academic year, but I hadn't like prepared and done for my final exams. So when I knew that I was pregnant and I have to finish the semester so that I, I start considering department. So it it was quite tricky for me like to continue that whole semester when pregnant and people are there judging me whenever I'm in class. I remember the first time the baby kicked, I was in, in a class and I was scared. So I, I went to the toilet and when I came back, asking what's happening, Only what's wrong. And I was like, I don't want to tell you, that is none of your business. And I was like quite rude. I didn't want to explain to anyone why I'm pregnant. I was like, it's my pregnancy, why I'm concerned. So you did have attitude? Yeah, I had like, I think I was rude. If I, if I now look back, I think I was rude because I thought they were judging me. They were like, oh, how can you be pregnant in your first year? So I was feeling like they were judging, so I was rude. Okay. Zawan, did you have any attitude or did it bring changes in your life? Yeah, changes are uh, unavoidable. Mm -hmm. So I experienced lots, lots of changes. In attitude, I think I became a more indoor person. And um, I also, there are people I hated for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'd see a person and then immediately I'd hate them. I don't know whether I should put that on, on the pregnancy though. <laughs> the medics will tell us. Yeah, so. Yeah, I hated some people. There are people I also started loving, like extremely. Mm -hmm. And uh, my life changed because I lost lots of friends. Bearing in mind I was a lead in praise and worship. Mm -hmm. I was also doing other things in technology as a leader. So there's this thing that the leader has to show the way. So because I'm pregnant, all of a sudden I'm bad. All of a sudden, people think I'll like mislead them. So I lost friends. Uh, I also lost myself in the pain. I got extremely depressed and suicidal at some point. Yeah, but then life goes on. So yeah. So when you say you became an indoor person, did you become an indoor person to hide the fact that you were pregnant, or? Not really. I think all throughout my pregnancy, the only time I, re I realized like I'm pregnant physically is at nine months. Because I've never seen it. I was actually forcing it. I would try to see whether it will budge, but then it refused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I think uh, I was not hiding from anyone. I was hiding from myself. I felt I had a lot that I hadn't like gotten gotten in line with, with myself, not with other people. There are people I'd welcome, but then I didn't want them to know I'm pregnant. 
those who didn't know, I didn't want them to know that I'm pregnant. So you say you became suicidal. Did you, did you attempt to kill yourself? I tried once, but then life happened. So I went and I ended up cool. It's okay. Yes, to me, life indeed changed. I got pregnant when I was in second year. So in first year, I was more of an extrovert. I was socializing with everyone that I could just get in the socialized to my mm -hmm. So when I realized I was pregnant, indeed I became an introvert. When, when just like I have a class, it's only the time that I move out of, out of the house. Mm -hmm. The rest of the times, I just close that door and stay that bed the entire day. Attitude. I had a bad attitude. I didn't care who you were. <laughs> if you just come, just cross a line, I'll just tell you something that you will not regret. And indeed, it was a bad thing. Yeah. So, did the pregnancy bring any changes in your life? Yeah, I lost a lot of friends. Everyone is judging you, saying, "Why don't we work with that woman?" You get this kind of words. Then in class, in a cartoon, on a trampoline, you know, we just say, if you can't come on, that is bad. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's a life change. So talking yeah. about friends, yeah. how did your friends take this? Yeah. A lot of my friends isolated me. They just left me. I was just there alone. Indeed, have never been up to date. Most of my friends are not back. Just say alone. But you say you told you told your friend first that you were pregnant. Yes, how we friend from school. Just oh. a, a friend from school. So you lost a lot of friends from school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Zawadi? How did your friends take it? My friends, uh, I guess pregnancy or any huge change in your life will teach you who are the real people in your life. I lost the people who are closer to me and then the people were further from me. Yeah, because my best friend's idea was I am what. And uh, because I didn't like agree with that, we had a beef. The other friends, okay, in class, I had, like for the people who knew in class, I had a good support system. Because I remember when I was asleep, all throat, I did class is chance at seven, and I don't know. So someone would wake me up. I'd have classmates come and look for me, especially when the morning sickness started. Yeah, there are classmates who used to come to cook for me. So I'd say there are friends who came through, but I lost the people I thought were close to me. So in good friends, you also made other friends. Yeah, and I think the connection I made that time is still there. Because these are people who you don't see regularly, but you will remember they did something. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call true friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lips. So, for me, uh, at the time I didn't have many friends. I only had this one friend that when we were friends with her, she was pregnant. So by the time I was pregnant, she had already given birth and she had a boy that was like six months old. So that was my friend by that time. At least when we were with her, she could tell me, oh, this is how you feel, this is normal. So I, I spent most of my time with her. Uh, I didn't have any other close friends by then. Yeah. Okay. Um, how was your mental health at the moment? Were you stressed? Did you consider doing drugs? Okay, for me, I wouldn't say I was stressed because of my pregnancy. Because pregnancy scared me, but it didn't stress me per se. Because the stress I had by the time is uh, my mom was going through like a challenge at home. So my school fee balance was quite a lot. And before I even knew that I was pregnant, I considered department because I wanted to go out and raise my fee. Mm -hmm. And then the process of being stressed about the fee and the stress that comes if you don't pay the fee, you, you not do the exams. So and then, then I got pregnant. Uh, I like I was stressed 
but mostly because of the school fee. Yeah. Okay, Zawadi, how was your mental health? My mental health, I think that's the thing that was affected much by my pregnancy. Uh, I felt I was alone in the journey. And loneliness isn't something good. Yeah, there, there, there are times and, uh, I would think of so bad things that I'm not proud of. There are times I thought of drugs, yeah, but then I would remember you have a kid in your body, so you have to like be healthy. And uh, I feel mental health is something that most of the people don't talk about. I started getting anxious. Like a lot, I would have panic attacks in class. Uh, I remember this one one event. I was in a general physics class and I got a panic attack. So I was losing it. My class repent to check me out, and the, the lecturer was like, "I'm being disrespectful because like I was almost hyperventilating." So I feel like my mental health was affected. I was stressed. All throughout my pregnancy because I almost had a miscarriage at six months. And um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, to me my mental health is not that much affected. Since I consider that I have to learn and I have to nurture this human being. So I was so much controlling the factor. Hata kama I stress, I have to take good care of myself. I've never considered that. Yeah. So, Agnes, how was your mental health affected? Were you stressed? Did you consider drug or alcohol? Okay, I never considered drugs, but considering the fact that I had a miscarriage at four months, my mental health was badly affected because I was very much in the So, I took care of my And then, like, I just didn't want to talk to anyone. Even my sister knew nothing about like how my mental health is. So I break down during class sessions. I remember there's a time the lecturer was in class mm -hmm. and then I just looked at him and I started crying. <laughs> so I just said to run out and go to the washrooms, make up with them work, and uh, I'm going to blow my nose. Yeah. And then most of the time I just walk, I hated myself. Because I, I was like, in your consistency, in your quanayo, I'd still be having my baby. And the fact that killer time one account, like, say, in your quanatashana, you'd be at this time, you'd be delivering and all that. So, like, sometimes it's hard, but at the end of the day, life has to move on. I'm sorry about that. So, was it responsibility? Oh, how was the responsibility? Was it love or lust? It was love. Mm -hmm. The responsibility was all about the love, the love for the baby, yeah, okay, had it. Yeah, for me, it was love from the, from the world go, it was love, uh, the pregnancy was a result of love, um, and the fact that the two of us knew that there was a big responsibility coming, yeah, so it was all love for the baby, ourselves, yeah. So you getting pregnant was because you guys were in love? Yeah, I think we were in love and stupid, of course. <laughs> <laughs> first, first of all, I think I was, I was like, for us, being in that relationship, we were kind of stupid because we decided, you know what, you're just going to do it. Um, you don't want to, to, to use any protection, whatever comes, comes, and yeah, we ended up pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Was it love? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was us playing around because we are first years. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> we are first years, we are alone at the school. You, you go to places, you don't, you're not supposed to be there, but then you go to those places. Mm -hmm. Um, the responsibility is a new one. I felt like, um, as I've said, that is what I said the first time. This is a huge responsibility that I didn't expect. I haven't had one like that. So, 
I'd say it's a huge one. And uh, I wasn't responsible enough, but I had to be responsible for the kid. Because the kid is here, she needs a mother, she needs a role model. She needs someone to take care of them. I'm not strong enough, but God has trusted me with it. So what do I do? I have to be responsible. You never mentioned anything about the dad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Because I, I guess the connection ended immediately. He realized I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he take responsibility? No. Um, <laughs> no, he didn't. And I don't blame him for that. Uh, I feel like some sometimes we can't blame people for what they do unless we know why they did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't blame him for not being responsible. After all, it is kid. I have to love her. By loving the kid, I have a portion of love for the father. I have realized that the hard way. Mm -hmm. She'll remind you of of what you did, she remind you of the person. And uh, you don't have to be bitter about that. Yeah, so I'm okay. He didn't, but we have to go on. So we did. Did the father take responsibility? Were you guys playing around? <laughs> or was it love? I don't think it was love. I think we were just playing around. And all of a sudden, we realize we are pregnant. And the daddy just decides that his moods changed all over. So, Hakutaki, every time I ask her to, you have done this, Victoria, you have done this. So, I think it was not that. And he didn't take any responsibility. Okay, how was your performance? Um, what your perform education performance at the moment when you realized you're pregnant? I think my performance in education, I did not choose to defer. Mm -hmm. Since I felt when I defer, my parents would feel like in no affair. Mm -hmm. So I just considered I move on with education no matter what, no matter the stress, no matter the mood swings, the attitude, I just decided that. So you never defined? I never defined. So how did you manage between education and handling the baby? It was tough. I don't know how I managed, but I managed. You managed? Yeah. Okay. God. Do you consider deferring? I deferred. I deferred, but I don't think it's because of the pregnancy. It was because of my mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I deferred. And uh, before I depart, I was also pregnant so because, because I got pregnant at the end of the first semester of first year. So the second semester was also in school. And uh, through the time, I performed well. The problem got in when I came back now with the kid. Mm -hmm. Me adjusting to being a parent and a student at the same time, I was, I was going crazy. I have morning classes. I haven't given... Okay, my nanny isn't isn't available, I'm not saying she's late. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I have a cat. I remember there's an instance I called a lecturer and told him, oh, I think it's a good one. I told him, um, my nanny hasn't met Ajakuja, so I don't think I'll do this cat. Can I request for a makeup cat? And he's like, okay, come with the baby, I'll take care of the baby. And he did a perfect job. So you came with the baby? Yeah, I was actually doing the cat and she's there playing with him. Yeah, so the adjustment, I feel like I would have performed better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have performed better if I didn't add myself a responsibility, which is not a problem right now. Mm -hmm. I think I've adjusted. I've adjusted to being a student, to being a mom, and also to doing other things. Because that's what a woman is about. You have to multitask. So you have managed to balance between yeah. education and taking yeah. care of them. And also my life. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. What about you, Harriet? Yeah, so for me, I, I decided to go for the department, especially because of what I said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, because of the fee balances and also now the fact that I was pregnant. And my, my, I think my due date was colliding with the time we were coming back from the long holidays. Mm -hmm. 
So I decided instead of coming back with a very, very like tiny baby, I just let her go until she's like a, a year old and then I continue. But I would say that that semester that I was pregnant and in school, I performed like very poorly. I don't know why. I don't know if it was the pregnancy or it was just general stress. But I think that was the semester I got a couple of days. Yeah, like two or three. But otherwise, uh, when I when I went home, I I learned to be a mother. Uh, but I felt stupid in terms of classwork. I felt like, ah, will I know anything? Uh, will I know coding again? So I was scared of coming back again and starting like school life. But once I got here, I adjusted and I think now I'm good. So you have managed to balance. Yeah, so now like my grades are quite good. I can manage to be a mom and also to mention that in the process of me being pregnant, me, me going home, I decided to get married. And the fact that now I'm a, I'm a wife, I'm a student, I'm a mother, but the grace has been sufficient. I'm free to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How how are your parents' impacts and oh. and family situation at the moment? When they realize you'll become a mother, now you're saying you'll become a wife. Yeah. So, um, I would like to say I'm blessed, or I was lucky that my my baby daddy was like positive. And we decided to take the life path together. And when we told our parents what we have decided, they, they didn't have anything to say. In fact, they said, when you met, you weren't there. So if you decide to do this, you will not like be a barrier. So and things were organized. They took it well. So in case we need, we need their support, they give us their support. But apart from them supporting us, it's like now we have a life of ourselves to raise our baby. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Zawadi? Mm -hmm. My parents. Parents and family situation. I feel like you never know the importance of family unless you want them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel like um, that's a huge support system. And it's not family alone and parents, it's a, it's, it's a support system. When you're pregnant and you're young, you need people to tell you it's okay. You need people of, to remind you of your inner strength. And that's where family came in. Throughout my journey, I think those are the people that I used to talk to. Though, I used to talk to the buffer. We used to be computing. Like, I would, I would detune myself from them. But then, you'll find they're the only people who care. Find, oh, okay. Financially, I also think it's them. I think that's another question, but I feel like my my family, my parents, all the medics, I, I had a good support system. Let me say that. Yeah, because I also got postpartum depression I, after I gave birth. And I feel it's because of my parents that I'm okay. I was going crazy. That's not, that's not something most of the people say. We are meant to believe, like the generation in Ikosahi, we are meant to believe you'll get pregnant, we'll prepare a baby shower for you, we'll bring your gift, but they don't know what happens after you give birth. They, they know nothing. So once you give birth, that's when you realize it's now or never. You wake up in the morning, you look at this kid, you realize someone is watching you. If I trip, if I make a mistake, <laughs> it will be a bad one. And that's that's when you call your mom and you're like, Mom, you're crying. And you're crying. You're crying. You're crying. And your mom is like, take it easy. This is what you do. This is what you do. So parents and family, that's that's something you need when you're pregnant. What about you, Vicky? Okay, parents in fact, the first time I told my mom that I was pregnant, she went silent. So I thought, 
She just called me and she told me, you know what, you are my daughter. Mm -hmm. So no matter if you are pregnant or not, I'll really support you. And you need my mom, who's the most is the best person in my journey. So did you get any financial support? From my mom, from my parents, yes. Mm -hmm. They have really supported me the entire time. What about friends, your baby daddy? Okay, my baby daddy, no, I've never gotten any support from him, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with it. Okay, yeah. What about you, Zawad? Okay, and then maybe you know, because of my side, here for account, keep it, okay, and the kid needs food, the kid needs a lot. So I'd say, yeah, I've been supported financially, yeah, but my friends, no. Yeah. So for me, uh, I think my the most financial support I get is from my husband since the day that I I got pregnant. At the time he was schooling, he had to drop out. He promised to drop out and seek a job and he got a job. And since then he has been like the sole provider to my life in any aspect of life. To me and to the baby, yeah. So we have to know. Okay, Agnes, do you think there is a there is a need for contra need of contraceptives or sex education in school? Yeah, I think there is need, but at the end of the day, some choices are personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, now find a kid who no longer wants to do me, they can come with it. So, no matter like. Nini, ata kama mtafunzo aji, like your sex education, ni soma high school, some of us to defunzo kia primary. So like, ata chikifunzo kwa campus, siyo nika kutakuwa na difference. Do it something you already know. You know that if I have sex go, nita pata mbol, neza pata STIs, but at the end of the day, unenda tu unafanya. So like, I feel like some things are personal choices. So ata watu ingina wa ambiwa aji, they'll still end up doing it. Okay. What about you, Harry? Is there any need? Okay, the need is there uh, because uh, I wouldn't like advise people to just go and experimenting of being pregnant. You know, that is not something to experiment about because once you bring a human to the world, the fact that you look at them and your mind is blown that they, they entirely depend on you, so you, you don't go playing around deciding that ah, if I get pregnant, it's okay, people have gotten pregnant. But parts are, all, are always different. You might be pregnant, but you may not be ready. So uh, my advice is always stick to the contraceptives. Yeah. What about you, Dad? The very need of sex education in school. Uh, being a CD ambassador, I'd say there's a lot of need for sex education because looking back, if I knew some things, I wouldn't have messed up. Like if I knew what to do in a certain circumstance, I wouldn't have messed up. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't get that. And I feel like most of our parents are, are afraid to talk about it, but they forget you are growing. Mm -hmm. And they are the same people that expect us. By the time we get out of campus, they expect you to also be a wife at some point. Mm -hmm. And unless you know how to handle your stuff sexually well, you keep on messing up. Because we have had we have had like situations where I'll give birth at an an early age, assuming 17, and then before we get to 20, I have another kid. Those become two mistakes at once. But then if you, we educate people on how to handle a situation at the start, I feel that gives them a, a point of choice. So if you're going to get pregnant, you would say, at least someone told me, but I didn't listen. Instead of saying, I didn't know. Because the society is hiding from heat, but it's happening. 
contraceptives are there, CDs are there, but most of the people have stereotyped these things. That's why you'll find a girl taking P2 more than seven times in a month, but they don't know the effects. You'll also find other people doing other things that are so messy, but they don't know the effects. So I wish the education system would also have like that, that section where sex education, and maybe contraceptives, but I wouldn't advocate for, for contraceptives that much. Okay. How about you, Rudy? I believe the sex education is indeed very really necessary. And even apart from the sex education, yes, the ones who are teaching them, who are educating them about the sex education, give them the reality of motherhood. I'm sure when people are giving the reality of motherhood, most of the people will move away from just having any freedom of having sex. And that will reduce and pregnancies. Yeah. So that being said, what should you tell others? Either somebody who is planning to have raw sex, somebody who is planning to be a mother at a young age. What should you tell others? Okay. If you're not stable enough, don't run for being pregnant. Motherhood is not very easy. Many people you can have you can get pregnant and have a baby. Indeed, you enjoy having the kid, but indeed, you not have the process. The process is so tough to just stick to not getting pregnant when you are not stable. Then, don't rush into this thing and start telling people, why didn't you tell me that motherhood is this hard? Because of the many responsibilities, sometimes you just get in the house, you can't sleep, you is starving. Nurturing that living baby is very hard. Sometimes you get guilt. Why am I not becoming the super mom that I desire? So just get pregnant with your baby. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Zawad? What is the advice you give? I am really watching. Uh, I would say that. Reality is different from what we post on social media mm -hmm. and what we, we say. Because most of us have displayed early pregnancy as something so easy. Especially in our generation where someone will get married at 20 and they love a YouTube channel, they post to you, but they don't post their living. Mm -hmm. No one tells you that a kid has to keep. No one tells you that a kid will have like constipation at a point. So I'd say you're not ready. Because most of us think we are until we are proven we're not ready. You're not ready to be a mother. For us, we have taken the responsibility of being a mother because we are already mothers. Yeah. But if you can avoid it until to a point where you are stable enough to take care of your kid without training, because we are here, we are studying, because we need stable lives. We need stable lives. So, if you need, you need like an enemy, you need your life to go well. Choose your parts very well. Make sure you take care of yourself. You're a young girl. That's what I say that to them. You're a young girl, you are princess. Make them right. So for me, I would, I would direct the message to that person that just when they are, they are pregnant, because there is that person that is watching and they know they know that I'm like a few months pregnant, I haven't told anyone. But my advice is abortion is not the best option. Abortion is killing and it has its its consequences. So if you're pregnant, if you just know that you're pregnant, uh, God will help you to raise the, the pregnancy and the baby. Uh, and for that, handle it. You you don't you don't have that person to tell to tell you that uh, like the the first baby's poo is like black. No, that I didn't know. I was like, what's wrong with this thing? Uh, yeah, there are some things that are not talked about, like in class or 
when you're talking with friends, they don't tell you, they don't tell you well, that pregnancy is, is painful at some point. So if, if you're thinking to go on that route, just do your research quite to well and you know what, you, what, what is coming. So some men say pregnancy is not easy. It comes with a lot. There's a part allergies in the process, but you won't realize it. Some people do get, like on a part of maybe infections, mostly UTIs. Pregnant mothers are prone to them. And then, come up on a talk on a ball, say already, just Take her, this shall happen. Like, because if you carry a kotoa, I'm sure you're blessing. But if you are blessing, so I'm thinking, eh? So, like, just weigh your options. And the best contraceptives is some experiments. Like, where's the kofa be like it? Come on, come on, come on, take it on. Come on, come on, survive. Just use condoms. So like, <laughs> so pregnancy is not easy. Chakula zenyona kula nga koba nawe. Utatumia pesa mingi. And if you're not careful enough, you'll end up getting a baby. Na, ujamnunulia inikin. Na pato mimbaya tungu umoja. Which is not rujo. Udipato me concentrate sana na. The cravings. Because how like, when I come to Katakuja, in some time, in a certain period of time. So like, just to your options, be careful. As I said earlier, the best contraceptive is abstinence. Na kama wezi funga migu kwa protection. Thank you so much, guys. So we saw sign and said. Mungu akileta mtoto analeta nasani yake. We have heard from our beautiful ladies. We are going to have a short commercial break, so stay tuned. Thank you.
um, thank you. Welcome back. My name is Salma Bint Abdurrahim, a data science student at Mary University, second year, second semester. Um, I'm here with very beautiful ladies who will introduce themselves after our former co host introduces me officially. Thank you. Thank you and welcome back to our Let's Talk Show se second session. Let me introduce back the, our co-host who will be taking over to by talking to our specialists. Today we have very beautiful ladies who are moms, who are sisters and who are daughters. They will tell us more about a mom too soon. Thank you. I can introduce ourselves from there. Thank you. I'm Dr. Kofi Karichondo, a medical officer with the health services at the University of Science and Technology. Thank you very much. I'm Pauline Wazala, a nursing officer working at the University of Technology. Good morning. My name is Harriet Bundi, a pharmaceutical technologist at the health services Mary University of Science and Technology. I'm a mother of three, a sister, and aunt to me. Welcome. Okay, thank you so much. We've now known them, and we'll jump right into the, uh, into the study, because these are studies too. So can you tell us about the statistics of the pregnancy in Mary University? Thank you very much for that question. I will talk because that is my area of interest. I interacted with quite a number of students. And the statistics are worrying. Being the statistical institution, the statistics are actually worrying. In 2020, let me talk about 2022, 2023 per se, because we have just started the year. 2022, we had about 30 students who came to our facility. Those who came for antenatal uh, until the last minute. But there are many who did not come to our place, they only went to the nearing facility. So when I talk about the numbers are worrying, it means that the numbers are high. We are in February 2023. Today, as I'm talking, we have had about 14 students in January. Actually, 14 antenatals in January, and those are the only ones who have come to our facility. Out of the 14, um, one of them is a staff, 13 are students, and out of the students, 11 of them are first year students. So those statistics are actually wild. So as being in a learning facility, we say the pregnancy rate. Thank you. Um, what about, okay, now you've already told us about the pregnancies that means they're underage. If it's students, they are underage. What do you have to say about that? I wouldn't say that they are all underage. Because when you talk about underage, you're talking about from the age of 10 to 19. Some of them are between the age of 18 to 24. Because like you can see, there are those who are in third years, there are those who are in second years. But first years, they will be at the age of 18 and 19 years. So that, 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 does that one put us in a bracket of underage pregnancy or teenage pregnancy? Yes, it does. At the time of delivery, they may be approaching 20, but still under the underage pregnancy. But in that line, there are also challenges that come with it that uh, Tari will be able to evaluate for us. And before you hand the mic to her, yes, please. Um, is it right to say that any student, a student being pregnant is an underage. Can, can someone say that? Not really. That's why I started by giving the ages of underage. Eh? Okay. Not all students are underage. Because at the time you're reporting at the university, like currently, we finish school in, in May, and in September you are in the, at the university. So some will finish at the age of 17, completing going to 18. So by the time they come here, by the number that we have got, the statistics is between 18 and 22. So what are the reasons for pregnancies? The student pregnancy, apart from sex and all that. 
what are the reasons? Uh, Let me have my colleague. Some of the reasons that make our students to have early pregnancies, some come from very poor backgrounds, others is the peer influence, influenced even by the colleagues and to start using the drugs. So when they are intoxicated, they get up uh, to do such things and they end up being pregnant without them having the consent of getting pregnant. Um, let's talk about contraceptives and this year. Mm -hmm. I think I, I want to add some more reasons. Because one of uh, the girls that was here said something that I, I think we can identify with with other students. That is lack of knowledge. Because uh, she said there are things that she didn't know. Uh, there are situations she found herself in and she was not supposed to be there. That is another reason. And the other one is uh, uh, lack of mentorship. Our girls, as one of them said, still, I am echoing them, they don't have mentors, people who will tell, tell them about sex, people whom they will share about this thing called sex and the consequences, and about pregnancy and the consequences. And uh, for that, I think I'm happy for this session, because at least we are, we are doing something about it. It is important that people feel that they are mentored, that people behind them who have come before them and who have worked this journey. We were at university at one point. And as Harriet has said, when you, you go to university, you're like, I'm an adult. I'm no longer under the, the watch of my parents. That principle was very hard on us. It's no longer there. Nobody cares about what you do. And uh, that takes them into situations that have never predicted. And I don't know how to handle them. So lack of mentorship is also something that, uh, uh, that is making them. Because if you look at the statistics as Harriet does, we, we were at one point very amazed. Those who get pregnant in, in, in the first year, there are those girls in rural areas who've never been exposed to anything, to any contraception. What they know is the school, the boarding school they went to, and then all of a sudden they, are, they learn into a freedom that they never expected to be. And then in the process, they, 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 they engage in some activities that they do not know, or they do not actually, um, not knowing, I don't think, but you have never calculated and see the impact of what you are doing. So that is my take on that. Thank you. I think to add on that also, not all of them are consensual. There are those who are even raped and they find themselves pregnant. Because it only takes a few seconds for somebody to get pregnant. So there are social functions that as a student you'd attend, and then you find yourself, maybe you are dragged and somebody took advantage of you. So there are those who have found themselves in that, in that situation. They found themselves pregnant after unconsented sex and they found themselves pregnant. For first years, why would we have most of them getting pregnant at that age? The naivety con contributes, but then there's this thing we call freshers night. That one contributes so much with university life because most of the people want to experience the experiment at that time and experience what freedom really means. And they find themselves in the consequences of pregnancy while they are students. Um, contraceptives and STIs. Well, um, there are a number of contraceptives. And uh, I would start by saying this. At the clinic, we, we do receive a number of young men coming for condoms. I haven't seen any single young woman coming for that condom. Um, the reason, I don't know, maybe men are more open about sex. I'm aware that that is uh, probably that is what my girls are doing wherever they are. But, uh, <laughs> but it's high time we embrace this fact that the sex is, 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 a normal, is a normal physiological thing 
and uh, we have to know how to manage it as you manage any other thing. Um, unfortunately, uh, at the university clinic, what we can offer as contraception is only condoms, but there are several others. Uh, you can have an implant, you can have uh, pills, you can have uh, many, many other if, if you want, you can be detailed when you come to us. But condom is readily, uh, they are readily available at our place and they can be used by anybody. Even female condoms do exist. So we haven't had a need because nobody has ever had come to us so that we can get them for, for them. But please, ladies, if you can't, as one of them, one of the ladies said, and uh, I caught her, if you can't stop opening your legs, then please take up a contraception, at least. It matters. Then uh, probably STIs, they are also there, rampant. And uh, what I tell my students sometimes is this. If you don't use a condom, and you are relying on P2. What is it that is better? Is it that we have to get a HIV infection? I would rather for, go for a pregnancy because I know at the end of the day you have a kid. But for HIV, what do I get? Nothing. So use uh, contraception, especially barriers, both the barrier because it is giving you double advantage against the pregnancy and against STIs, which are there. And you never know who has STI because whenever you are in sex, see at the and Konayo. But you find yourself having an STI. And for ladies, it is very dangerous in this way that uh, you get an STI, uh, something that you call right, an infection of chlamydia. You never know that you have it. What you know is later on when you want to get pregnant, you will find your, uh, your, your reproductive uh, uh, organ damaged completely. You find your tubes that are closed. And that's why people are crying all over, looking for babies and they can't get them because their sexual life was not right at the beginning. Thank you. For me, let me talk about the P2. One of the students mentioned it. It's the morning after pill that our students come to us for at our clinic. We go and get unprotected sex, the way Dr. Talia said, because most of them fear to come to us for the condom, so they end up having unprotected sex. But the morning after, they come to us for the morning pill. They think that they can get rid of the pregnancy without thinking about the STIs. So when they come, I tell you, Madam, can I get a pig too from your clinic? For us, we don't do that. We refer them to the nearby chemists and advise them if you want to have it to be more safe, just take it the first 24 hours before uh, after having the unprotected sex. But you can take it after 72 hours. But the most effective is the first 24 hours. When you take it more than one time in a month, it's not going to work for you. And that is something that our girls doesn't know. They end up taking many times, and at the end of it all, they get pregnant. Why? Because you interrupted the normal body functions of your hormone. So I advise our girls, if you know you have fun protect and safe, the first 24 hours are over so that you can be safe. But don't do it the next day. If you know you are sexually active and you can do away with the sex, please come for the normal and uh, come. We will give you other contraceptives that are safe. Okay. I would say uh, contraceptions are there. And I would like to encourage every girl. Like the Tari has said, if you cannot keep yourself, please use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I
You are the one talking. Um, we are sorry for the inconvenience. It's just the network issue and uh, power. Nigeria, Kenya, Kenya power is so monopoly. We need someone to work on that. It's, it's just too much. So we are. I think we have exhausted the contraceptive and STI issue. So now we can head on to the post and pre maternal care. What do you have to say on that, Dr. Thank you very much for that question and uh, for that statement. First, it is we encourage every person, every mother who has found herself pregnant, especially as a student, we congratulate those ones who decided to keep the pregnancy. Because like we've said, every child comes with their own blessings, much as they are also responsibilities. But we encouraged every mother or mom to be, uh, mom to, be to start their antenatal clinics as early. At the university, yes, it is not our core mandate, but we offer antenatal services. We'll take you through the antenatal services. And we guide you where we can until you are able to, you reach that stage of delivery. The last stage, especially in the third trimester, we encourage you now to go to a facility where you will be able to, assist, to be assisted during delivery. And when you go there, we also we will be also be told about the postnatal care. But like I said, every pregnancy comes with its own responsibility because there is time that you'll have to spend as a student going to the clinic, and maybe you come to our place, we have to send you somewhere else to go and get the test results. So all that is wasted time, all that is wasted resources at that time, because that is not your core mandate or your responsibility at that time. But since it has happened, we give you that social support. So we encourage every person to start antenatal clinics as early, because every visit has its own objectives and its own care. During delivery, that one will be taken care of at the hospital, and post-delivery is also taken care of at the hospital and at the clinic where you be, the, the, the mother will be taking the child for the clinics. Let me add this. Um, we are talking about uh, early pregnancies, teenage pregnancies. Um, in medical terms, they have a lot of complications. The moment you get pregnant as, as a young girl, the, there are expectations that you may get many complications. Some of them, if I was to, to say them here, it will not make sense for those who are probably not in the medical field. But the anguage is associated with many complications, both for the mother and the baby that they are carrying. So in, uh, in that perspective, I think young ladies at campus who get pregnant, they are more even encouraged to have this follow-up because you are exposed to several uh, complications. One of them is called uh, preeclampsia, is that you have high blood pressure, you have, uh, you have uh, kidney problems, and uh, eventually you can even die of it. By the way, it's not to scare you, but statistics are telling us that from my, my friends, the young ladies here, one of the challenges they had is psychological trauma of a kind, because they don't know what to do, they don't know what to expect, they don't know one, two, three, and that can be, uh, it can be taken care of if you seek advice. Probably, well, let me give my personal experience. I got pregnant at, uh, in my last year as a medical student. I was a medical student. I had gone through gynecology, all the subjects. 
But believe me, I saw things that I never expected, right? I had experiences that I didn't know they exist. Yet I have been in class, and I knew one, two, three is to be expected. It becomes something very new to me. So you need somebody to take you through that process. You need somebody to encourage you, accompany you. I like the, uh, the, the fact that all of you talked about your mothers, mothers coming in. I am a mother, a grandmother for that matter. <laughs> and uh, my daughters, when she got pregnant, one thing she told us is, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. I was so confused. I did not, well, she was not very young when she got pregnant, but uh, I, I want to identify her with our young ladies who are here. You do not know what you are expecting. So you need care more than ever before. Thank you. Okay. Um, since we have talked about pregnancies and we have come to learn that people will campus students, not only in most everywhere in the world, will have free time and will engage in those sexual activities. What would you talk, what would you say about uh, ways to reduce pregnancy? You've talked about the condoms and contraceptives, but still, things still happen. People are still getting pregnant. Thank you for that question. As a student, let me talk in the experience as a student. The first question you have to ask yourself is, why are you in campus? Because the contraceptions are there, but we've not used. So if we put our priorities right as students, then we'll be able to reduce this number of pregnancies. We have heard from the real experiences that most of it was not because they were married, not because, yes, there's one who wanted a child, but that was not the right time. And when you're talking about contraceptives, we say you, uh, or family planning, you have children when you need them. So I would say first, prioritize yourself. Once you prioritize yourself, then these other things will be like a social addition to what you're doing. And so when you prioritize yourself, your academic comes first. And then you'll be able to stand where our friends said abstain. And if you do not, then you use the contraceptives. I'll give my colleague to continue on that one. For me, I'll say we need more mentors. Parents and the older sisters, we need to come out, talk to our young girls and our young sisters, tell them what to do and when. Warn them. Because I believe if some of them were told, if you go and get engaged in such activities, you'll become a mother, and there are responsibilities that come with that. You will not have time to read. You will not have time even to enjoy your youth. You are there as a mother. You start having responsibilities. We have, you have no finances. There is a kid looking up for, uh, to you to provide. She wants you to be there for her. She doesn't know you have classes to attend. So I think we as women, we need to come out early enough, talk about sex with our children, with our young sisters. It's time not to sit back and watch them live by their own. We need to come out, talk about sex, talk about ways to prevent it, talk about friendship, healthy friendship, because I believe some even if you ask some, they were influenced by their friends. Talk about relationships, who to have, and even to know if this friend is a good friend or not. Is she telling me the right thing to do? Is she influencing me to do bad things? And when we do that, I believe the numbers are going to come down. Different. When I brought it up, it was just to to encourage you that uh, to, to to tell you that it's impo important that you seek advice, um, no matter who you are. Because I I was a doctor. It was my last year, but I I experienced things that I didn't know exist. Um. So the conversation must be there from now on. 
Young men, young ladies, we must talk to them about sex. We must talk to them about what happens. We must pull our socks up and mentor our girls. And um, probably some uh, practic practical uh, steps. One is don't find yourself in a situation where you are alone with a man. If you must be uh, in, in a social gathering, please be too with your friend. It will really uh, help you in a way. Because, uh, because of course, you must be intimate so that you get sex. And none of them told us that she was a sexually loose girl who, who would sleep with anybody. They slept with somebody they thought was a friend. They slept with somebody, they, they had sex with somebody they thought cared, apart from Zawadi who probably uh, was have, having that, that uh, first year's uh, uh, fever that, uh, that found herself in, in a situation like this. So most of, we, we, we've talked about contraception, we are talking about mentoring, we are also talking about sex, sex education. Talk and talk and talk. Talk to your friends, talk to your sister, younger sisters, and uh, uh, probably also we need as women to change our mentality because we do believe that probably uh -huh, uh, uh, we, 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 we are still having that, that, that ca ca complex that we are women, we are meant to have children. If I don't have sex with this man, he will run away from me. Oh, oh, time is going. I'm not having a boyfriend. Stop that. You can be complete without a man. That's my encouragement. You are complete without somebody. Let's, Pauline talked about bargaining power. Let us reach a point where we can bargain for sex, right? We are not the weaker ones. We can bargain for, bargain, sorry, for sex and determine when we have sex, when we want it, not when it is imposed from somewhere else. Thank you. I've talked so much. <laughs> we are ready to learn that, Terry, so there's no mm -hmm. problem. Um, now we are proud of the girls who are here. Mm. They'd never had abortions. They were able to go through the journey, pass through all the hardship and all that, feeling the way they felt. But what about the others who get pregnant and get abortions? Exactly. And in fact, that was my first sentence. I forgot to say it, that I am proud of you girls, that you made the decision to keep your babies. I'm very proud of you. And I'm proud for any other girl out there who would choose to keep her pregnancy. Um, actually, from WHO, apparently for all the girls that get pregnant, from uh, between 15 and 19 years, because that is what we are calling early pregnancy. 55% of them are bought. More than half will have abortion. And in many cases, it's in unsafe circumstances. That's why I told you that the leading cause of death in young girls it's pregnancy, unplanned pregnancy. And must, much of it is because of these unsafe abortions. So my encouragement today, whenever you find yourself in that situation, choose the right thing. Choose your baby. Maybe that is the only baby that God has given you. You never know. In the future, you may not have any. So keep that one because you have it, right? Some of them, some some people would say I'm pro pro life. There there are people who are pro life and others who are not pro life. So who would advocate for uh, 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 an abortion? I won't advocate for one because of the dangers that is exposing you to, and because of uh, why are you aborting this baby? By the way, can you put yourself a baby? Can you put a baby inside yourself? See, people had sex. One year, two years, three years, and four years, and they never got pregnant. Yeah. So that alone to me should tell you that this baby is there to stay. Right? Because you are avoiding the dangers, and also you are keeping this baby. But they are there. 55% of the 
of those who get pregnant. So in this university, if we are to have 100 students getting pregnant, 55 of them would abort. In fact, in the clinic, there is a time one lady came and the pregnancy test was positive, and then she said, I'm aborting this baby. Come on, beer. Let us talk about it. Takaniambia, hakuna talk. And I never saw her again, meaning she flashed it out. So congratulations, ladies. Not to encourage people to get pregnant early, but to encourage you to keep your babies. Thank you. You won't regret it. Thank you. And every procedure and every action has its own consequences. We can't run away from the fact that abortions are there. But as we are both, as you are both, you are facing a risk. There's risk of bleeding. There's risk of infection. There's risk of even perforation of your uterus. At a very young age, what will happen in the future? So we tend to say we discourage abortion more because there is nothing good about it. And every time something happens to you, you may end up getting adhesions which may also affect your future fertility. And so we discourage abortions. If you found yourself pregnant, keep it. Continue with the clinic and you will be supported. Most of those that I have interacted with, yes, as Dr. Tari has said, some come, yes, you talk with them in the first time and they'll say, we'll see you next time and they'll never come back. The next time you meet, you're asking, what happened? It just happened. Did it just happen? No. Somebody took a step and did something. And most of them will come with complications at the hospital. You are bleeding too much. You are very pale. And we have now to start. Did you tell anybody no? Did you tell your parents no? So because of that, you have to go to the hospital. At the end of the day, they will know. So what we do when you meet us the first, we'll encourage you and ask you, who have you told at home? Even those who have spoken here, there are those who really, we bargained so much for them to tell somebody that they are pregnant. Not here in school, not friends. Somebody who is responsible because you need a social support. And if abortions will come because you think you do not need, uh, you do not have a social support because you are fearing of stigmatization and discrimination at that time. And then somebody says, no, this is not what I planned. I have to get rid of it. But it has its own consequences. And so we say no to abortions. If it happens, keep the pregnancy and take care of the pregnancy and the baby. Thank you. Um, uh, let me talk much. Whenever I, I hear abortion, I remember this, uh, this true story. Uh, I'm a medical officer, as I said earlier. So there's this lady who, who got a uh, abortion. I was in a hospital. And the baby was big. I think it was probably about four or five months. It was a big baby. But whoever helped her to abort, I think they inserted some instrument. And the, the baby was like in pieces. And instead of it coming out, it was actually perforated through the uterus and it ran into the abdomen. And what happened is what she got what we call peritonitis, which means pus full of, uh, she had pus in the whole abdomen. So we had to take her to surgery. So when we to took her to surgery trying to find out, of course she will never tell you it's because of my abortion. So when we, we, caught, we took her to operate, we, 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 she was given an incision yani kukata from up here down there because we did not know why she's having this pus in her abdomen. So we, we opened, we got some pus, a lot of it, and then we also started picking some parts of the baby, the bones, the head, the whatever in the, in the abdomen. What I want to say it is this lady, when I was looking at this scar that, that she had from up down there, sometimes when we, have, we, we operate, we operate at least one scar down or up. It is not that extensive from up, down, down. When, when, I, when I was looking at her, I, I, I told myself, this is a reminder to her that what she did was extremely dangerous. It will be a reminder forever because nobody will remove this scar. What I want to say is you are exposing yourself to very dangerous things. If, even if you want to abort, please do it 
in a safe because they are safe ways of doing abortion. I'm not for abortion, but if you must do it, do it safely. Thank you. Okay. Um, would you say there is a safe place? Is there a safe place to do the abortions? Not really to all the, the, the topic, the sex life and young mothers and everything. Is there a safe place? No, there is no a safe place for me. For all I can say, it's, you are the one to, like Dr. Arian said, it's all about attitude, even our girls think so, and sh the choices that you make. Life is about choices. There are two ways. You choose the right thing to do, or you do the, the wrong thing, you face the consequences. That's what, for me, I can say. Is there a safe place? Yes, there is a safe place. There is hope for everybody. Like I said before, you just need to recognize where you are at that time. If it is not right for you to have that uh, uh, expedition, then don't start it. But we give hope and say, use contraceptives if you cannot abstain. And the best contraceptive is the condom for us students because it's a barrier. There are, uh, there are different methods of contraceptions. We are at the clinic. We may not offer everything, but when you come, you will get the advice that is needed. Wow. So there is a safe place. There is a social support within the university. We have student counselors. If you think that you are so overwhelmed with anything, please visit them and speak it out. We have lecturers around us. Identify one as a friend. We have even other colleagues and friends, and friends that you choose should be able to give you advice that will help you continue with your education and achieve your goals. So that is the safest. But if every, every other thing within the university, condoms are available. Please let us use them and dispose them correctly in the right place, and we'll all be safe. Thank you. Me, I would talk as a Christian and a born again one for that matter. <laughs> I'm not preaching today, but uh, of course we can't run away from our beliefs and our, our I believe that um, I found safety in abiding to the Christian values that are in the Bible and the gatherings that you have when you go to church. That, to me, I'm a doctor, remember, but to me, it's a safe place, right? It's not a preaching, and uh, I'm not intending to preach. I'm not intending to, 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 to pull you, all of you, in, in my situation. You can choose something different. But uh, one thing you, you should choose wisely, the friends you have, right? you are safer in the hands of good friends, right? Find, if you are at campus, the other way of protecting yourself, find something to do, right? Don't be idle. Avoid idleness. And then avoid com compromising situation. Finding yourself with a boy in the, in the room, with a man in the room, mukiwa wawiri for one, two, three hours, it's very dangerous. None of us can res majority of us cannot resist that situation. So seek company whenever you, you are in the company of other sex, uh, uh, other, other people of the other sex. I can't really emphasize more. So uh, I just said two, three things. One. A Christian like me, yes, we are tempted, but I think it's a protection. Secondary, look for good friends. Thirdly, avoid, avoid being alone. Just be in the group, right? Because uh, the reason why I'm saying this, um, one study said this, that some of the teenage pregnancy, it doesn't happen here, but it happens in the informal settlements. Mahari, one room, 
is accommodating the father, the mother, the children, ten of them. So whatever the father and the mother da do, the children are aware of that. They will go and experiment that to copa moja. So being uh, be, being in a situation where you are in a, you are in like a small room with somebody else, definitely it will take you. Uh, and then then it's about contraception. Thank you. I hope we we'll, we make sense. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do make a lot of sense. Okay, now um, we've learned that most of the early pregnancies, or we can say, um, what are they called, underage pregnancies, after getting their first kid, it doesn't take long to get the second one. Like even the actually people who are wealthy, old enough, we, we can say more experienced and stuff. Like Rihanna, the baby has not even reached. She's already pregnant again. Vera Sidika is pregnant again. But how can we... Okay, I've, I've gotten pregnant. I've given birth to that kid, but I don't want to have another. What's the best way I can prevent myself from getting the other until when now I'm ready? Thank you very much. Those you've mentioned are celebrities, but even among us, we have an experience there are those who got pregnant, not married, and the baby daddy ran away. She gave birth, gave the child to the mother. She came back to school. When she went back home, she came back with another pregnancy from the same man. What do you do? First, me as a person, recognize where you're coming from. I don't think the ladies that have been here, I am not so sure, maybe I may be speaking for them, they will come back with a second pregnancy after such an experience because it's so challenging to be in school and take care of the child. That is why we say antenatals and postnatal is very critical because when you go, they will advise you on what method to use as a contraceptive. If it has happened the first time, there is no doubt that the second time it can again happen. So we say we use family planning. But if the Christian values now come in like what Dr. Ari has said, then we can avoid a second pregnancy. If the challenges and the experiences that you have gone through as a student and as a mother, then you may avoid the second pregnancy. So that is my take. Know where you are coming from and why you are here and what you really want to achieve you may be able to overcome. But sometimes the lifestyle, even in the university, is also a challenge. But if you accept where you are, you, the challenges that you are facing, then you'll not look at what the other person needs for you to be on the same level with that person. Because if you go that direction, you may find yourself pregnant very fast. Because you're putting yourself to the standard that somebody else has. And you want to live like them. You want to achieve things like them, yet you are a student who is depending on your parents. Some may have parents that are not even providing. So you want to live that life. But if you accept where you are, what you are doing, then life will be very easy for you. Even the psychological challenges will be minimal. Thank you very much. I will say this. It happens more than often that somebody gets pregnant and the next time one year down the line you find them with pregnancy it happened to me let me tell you i i, I thought i will have only three babies i have five of them <laughs> congratulations <laughs> uh, and i can't explain exactly why and how but uh, i have those babies and i thank god for them but let me say this in my belief, you can contradict me if you want. Those who get pregnant immediately, they are seeking some kind of uh, um, comfort. They, they seek somebody who understands them. They, 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 they are no, no longer sure of themselves, right? And when somebody, a, a man comes and tells you, I love you the way you are, or whatever, he's able to take responsibility even the, for the child of the other man, you run into their arms, right? So for that, I want to say this. Ladies, we can do it. We can make it without men. 
Sawa. We don't need a man, a man in a... I'm not belittling men. Young men, please understand me. I'm not belittling you. But I want these ladies to understand that they are empowered, right? That even if the, the baby daddy refuses to take responsibility, you will carry on and take responsibility of your baby, and you are able to do so. Because you are doing computer science like them, right? So you are up to the task. If you are up to the task, be confident. Have the same bargaining power. Because the, the, the issue here is not to have the same bargaining power. It's feeling like he's, 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 he's actually giving me favor. He's favoring me by uh, have, having me as a girlfriend. It's not true, right? Then uh, probably the other issue, as, uh, as, I, as I conclude, is uh, as Pauline was putting it, Learn from the experience. Thank you. OK, now, um, what now can we do now that these things are happening? People are having sex and not using protections. They are getting, today we are talking about pregnancy, but I'm sure you've dealt with a lot of STI issues and HIV and stuff. What can we do? Health is a personal responsibility. That is what I will say. Health is a personal responsibility. Getting an early pregnancy will affect your health. It will affect even your performance. We have had the, tes the, te the, 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 the testimonies and the experiences that people have had. So let us learn to make the right choices. Do the right thing at the right time, in the right way, at the right place. And then we'll be able to avoid, we'll be able to move on. So health being a, a, a personal choice, I believe we are all adults and we make choices. So let us make the right choices that will affect us positively and not negatively. Much as we would want to keep the pregnancy, much as we would want to keep that baby, but that is not the time. While in school, it is not the time to have those responsibilities. That time will come and you'll take care of those responsibilities. Because when you get pregnant as a mother, that time you are in class, the child is missing that mother. And we are telling you to exclusively breastfeed for six months. And you're in class for eight hours. You yourself, you find yourself in pain. So what you're saying, look at all this and make the right choices so that the second time does not happen. Okay. Now, what what um, what we can do, right? Okay. I think we have been talking about what we can do. Just repetitions. Yeah. Um, we. I think we are doing the right thing now because we are mentoring, I believe, people. Uh, we can still talk and talk and talk until uh, it is painful for somebody to ha to find herself or themselves in this situation when nobody ever told them. A father who will get pregnant when they know they, they've been told. So we will talk and talk and talk. <laughs> we will encourage, encourage, encourage. We welcome you at the hospital if you want uh, advice, if, if, if you want sharing experiences. We have many. I gave a few of them in my life. I, I, I am not, I'm not ashamed of, of saying who I am. So come to us. We give you medical advice, but we also have social advice because we are mothers, we are, we are wives. We, some of us we got pregnant when we are in school. Uh, I told you I was in my last year, of, but it was tough still. In my last year, it was still very tough. So come for advice. Get to talk to somebody. Surround yourself with good people. Your mother is very important as, she, as they have been in the lives of these girls. Nina, sometimes Nambia ladies, at a mama kwa chikuka sidikia or your parents, were, they get mad. Eventually, watakuja kusema because you are their child. Mm -hmm. So, share with them. Akuka sidikia, ata kuchape ama, akutandike ama, akurushe, ama akasidike. But eventually, that is the person that will help you. Tukopa moja. Yes.
Okay, now I'm sure there are a lot of things we have not yet talked about. There are things I've forgotten to ask. So now I'm going to give each and every one of you a chance to talk about or ask what you would want to know. Yes, uh, that's a common occurrence. And what I would say is probably we maybe next time have a session of people who have uh, gone through it or those who are getting pregnant or probably we also need to, to pull up our success at, at, at the clinic. Among the advices, among the, the, the things we tell pregnant mother, we also may be able to tell them that it's good that you've raised it up. Um, but it's a condition that is well known. It's treatable. It's manageable. You come out of it, and uh, we are ready as 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 clinicians and as people who have uh, the knowledge to take you through it. Sometimes you can't predict it. You can't predict that this mother will get a, 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 this depression. It's not predictable. Like you can prevent it. It, is, it can just happen. Because you are going through a lot of hormonal changes. You also have your social issues. They can all put you down. Thank you. OK, now one more question from the young lady behind. OK, my question is, you say that um, the best method I can prevent pregnancy is through abstinence and the use of contraception. So I'm a girl who but I don't want to get pregnant. Then I come to you as a medical specialist the, to, for the family planning. Okay? I want to do family planning and get pregnant. So, what are the negative effects? Are there any negative effects that you will tell me in order to avoid this? Yes, thank you very much for that question. Every drug has a side effect. And contraceptions as they come to us, like we've said, they are hormonal, they are non-hormonal. We have, uh, among the, the non-hormonal, we have barriers, and we also have the implants, but um, the, the, an implant device. So every method has its own uh, side effects. So when you are coming to seek advice on family planning, we not only tell you, and we don't give you a method to use. We give you all the advice on all the contraceptions available in the market, and you make a choice yourself. The side effects may range from minor to major ones. And so, based on that, we give you the advice of every method you make a choice. Once you've made a choice, you go use it. If it affects you, you are told, come back again. And then you'll be advised again, and you can stop that method and change to another one. Thank you. I hope I've answered your question. All right. um, we have learned a lot today. What we maybe you feel like has not been spoken about, you can just go there to the health care and ask your questions. You can see they are friendly people. They are mothers, auntie, if you would wish to call them that. And they are experienced in this stuff, so they will be able to advise you. And in, in case of anything, they will also be able to help. You sh uh, know how to deal with the situation. So that's all for today from us, I guess. Yeah. Thank you.
Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in till now. We have learned a lot from our specialists. We have heard a lot from our ladies. I think the Bible says those who have ears, let them listen. Let me welcome our co-pioneer of the Let's Talk show to finish this show. Thank you. Two years ago, Laura, a 20-year-old, joined university to pursue a dream career that she had always wanted. She had envisioned that university would be a place whereby she will make new friends, establish new relationships, and above all, help her drive her dream career. Her, her main obligation was to help her excel in her studies. Today, looking at her, the joy, the excitement, and the expectations that she had have faded away. Reason being, she has an added responsibility. Responsibility of bringing up her two-year-old child was dealing with embarrassment, fatigue, and stress of carrying the pregnancy to term not enough. What will the baby eat? Where and whom do I leave my baby with when I have to attend class or sit for an exam? What will happen? Is my baby safe? These are some of the challenges faced by university female students when they are charged with responsibility of bringing up children in campus. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to appreciate all those who are able to share with us their life experiences. Special appreciation goes to Zawadi, Harriet, Agnes, and Victoria. Thank you for taking time to share your life experiences. We also take an opportunity to, to appreciate our specialists, Dr. Apofi, Pauline, and Harriet. Thank you for your wise uh, counsel. My name is Dr. Mary Modulo. I am a lecturer in the School of Computing and Informatics. I'm also the chair person Department of Computer Science. I'm also an advocate for women empowerment and mentorship for girls. Please take an opportunity to go through our 10 episodes on women empowerment. Thank you.